Hello and welcome to the second episode of the podcast. I'm Ashley, your host, aka the Monogram Mompreneur, and I'm so glad you're here today. Today's topic is going to be a really good one. We are going to talk about some tips, tools, and strategies, as well as a pep talk so you don't get overwhelmed. So let's get right into the episode. So I have a love-hate relationship with social media especially for small business. Oh my gosh. I love the opportunity and what social media can do for us as small business owners, but it gets so overwhelming sometimes. Let me know if you agree. You can get hit with such good things with social media for your business and such bad things like, oh, she just launched her business and made 100000 Um, dollars in 30 days like why couldn't I do that or they have so much good content like how can I compete with that or she has a new machine I need that too to do good in my business or oh my gosh this business posts on TikTok on YouTube on Instagram they're everywhere how are they posting all these this content. And let me tell you, I know you've probably heard this phrase before, but comparison is the thief of joy. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you how deep and dark I can get in a funk by comparing myself to others on social media, comparing myself or our business to other businesses on social media. Why didn't we get those sales? Or why are we not getting going viral? Or why are we not doing this? And I'm here to tell you, Stop, just stop, stop comparing yourself to others. We're gonna strive to do our best. We're gonna strive to do um, great content and good things to get our business out there, but we are gonna stop comparing ourselves. So I challenge you to do the same. Another challenge is, I know it feels like a hamster wheel, it does. You're constantly having to post every day on social media, that can feel super overwhelming. So I'm gonna give you some tips and strategies that I've implemented in our business, in my own personal life. Um, This is not just for small business, this is personal as well. Let me go ahead and give you some action tips to start off with. Um, I want you to come up with a strategy to start. So, and I don't want you to, if you're just starting your business, go ahead and reserve, if you have your business name already, go ahead and reserve those um, handles, is what they're called, or the business name, on your socials, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, wherever you want to be, go ahead and reserve that name um, and make sure it's there because that's another whole thing if you chose a business name that someone already has. Um, But then you're, no, we're not gonna start posting on all those places at once. Let's pick one platform where you think your customer is um, and you might not know that yet. So let's take an educated guess of where your customer would be And let's pick one platform to start posting on. Another thing I want you to do, and this is personal as well, um, is get your time back. I want you to set boundaries for scrolling. So when I chose to stop looking at my phone first thing when I woke up in the morning, um, that was a game changer for me. I found myself so, so much less anxious, so much more joyful when I stopped comparing myself as soon as I woke up, like I, I'm not doing enough and I haven't even like got the crust out of my eyes or had my coffee and I'm already getting that comparison and creeping in. So I want you, if you are used to waking up and directly looking at your phone, cause a lot of us have our alarms on our phone and we just grab it to turn it off and it's natural to just scroll. I want you to stop, don't do it. And then I want you to limit your scrolling time during the day. I make sure to put my phone away because I know it is such a distraction. I don't even answer phone calls. I know that's terrible. Um, I wait to the end of the day to respond to emails, to respond to texts, to respond to phone calls. So that the same thing goes with social media. I have little plots of time that I'll answer comments or that I will answer emails or that sort of thing. So make sure you set boundaries with your scrolling and your messages. Okay, another thing I want you to do, another action step I want you to take is I want you to unfollow any business or anyone, or you can just mute them, that makes you feel less than or not enough. So just mute them if you don't wanna be rude, you don't have to unfollow, but mute it. 
you need to focus on you and your business. So I want you to take that distraction. I want you to take that comparison away for a little bit. And I want you just to focus on your business. Um, it's so great to see what others are doing for inspiration, but sometimes that can get super overwhelming and cause more anxiety um, and cause more stress. Also, this is the tip if you're more of a content creator, but I want you to block anyone that leaves nasty comments or is just rude. Um, I've had to do that a lot lately. I've started blocking people on Instagram. Unfortunately, you cannot do that on YouTube. Um, but I block people and I delete their comments if they're rude or if they make mean comments. Like, it's not worth your energy. Just delete them and move on. Um, block them and then they can't leave the comment again. So now let's go into that strategy of social media for your small business. Now that we've got some of the uncomfortableness out of the way. So as a small business owner, you are juggling all the hats. You are making your product. You are the marketing department. You're the customer service. You're everything. So social media, content creator, just add it to the list. It's fine. So a tool that we found that was su that is super helpful for us, and it is a free tool, um, up to a certain amount of posts. I think you get like 50 posts a month, which we're not even close to doing at this point um, as a solopreneur or we have a um, husband-wife business. So we use Metrical and it will auto post. You can go into it um, and you connect all your accounts to it and you can connect Instagram, Facebook. Um, I think you can do Twitter. TikTok, YouTube Shorts, you can do all of the major platforms and you, for example, would upload your short form video, aka your reel, and then you would upload it. You can edit the content to be native to the platform, like you can choose the cover, you can choose the caption, your hashtags, all that sort of thing for those platforms in that one tool and it will schedule it out for you and it blasts it to all of those platforms. Super cool and effective if you have content to post. That's a whole nother ball game. So Metricool is a free app um, or you can use it on your desktop and it is super helpful for a small business owner. If you have do not have the energy to post to all those platforms, I know I don't, I don't care to post to all those platforms. Let me just do one and done. So another tip for that is while you're making your content, while you're working, take some, it's called B-roll, and you just take some shots, take some quick little snippets of video, set your tripod up, get yourself working, um, take some video of your stuff that's going out that day, take video of your new products, take lots of video, and then you will have like a bank in your photo album of stuff that you can post. You can put words over it. You can have all kinds of content, take photos of stuff, um, really good, good at capturing content. And then you'll have content to post. I know that seems so silly, but we, I know I am so guilty. I just want to work and get things done. Um, like the other day I embroidered seven Peter Millar golf polos probably the most stressed I've ever been embroidering. Those, if you don't know what those are, it's like the Lily Pulitzer of golf shirts. I don't know how to describe it. Super expensive. They were like thin bathing suit material. I cried at one point because um, I thought my machine ate one. It did not. The good old brother was working on one and the bobbin ran out. It was a whole nother story. But I was so stressed. I didn't film any of it. I didn't film a YouTube video. It would have been a perfect YouTube video to show you how to do a dry fit polo um, without puckering. I used, um, what did I use? I'll give you a little tidbit. All Stitch makes a special, I think it's called Pro Stitch. I'll have to link it in the um, description below. Um, but it was the perfect stabilizer for it, but I was so stressed I couldn't film anything. And I didn't, I don't even think I took pictures. Um, for like my portfolio or anything like that. So all that being said, I know sometimes we can just get caught up in working and getting it done quickly and efficiently, but make sure you take time to take some photos, take some behind the scenes um, action shots um, so that people can see your business and you have more content to post than just your pictures that you post on your website. Also, I want you to ask 
your customers for some pictures. Like see if in the reviews they give you a picture. Ask if you can use it on social media. Have them tag you. I love customer photos. It's such an authentic way to show people that you're a real brand, that you really sell things. It's not just you and all the photos. So that's another option besides creating your own content is get your customers to share their photos with you and then share those. Um, I love sharing reviews. Um, those are awesome. We just capture the reviews. We put it in a cute little graphic and put it on our Instagram and Facebook. So there's so much, so many ways you can do content without having to do lip singing on reels. Like you don't have to do that kind of stuff. So another strategy and tip is to make sure you're consistent. Oh boy. It is so hard to be consistent on social media coming from someone who has a horrible time being consistent. Things come up, people get sick, there's vacations, all sorts of things can get in the way. So that's why scheduling content is probably your best way to be consistent. And you don't have to post every day. Try three times a week or twice a week or try your best to get in a rhythm and like get stuff planned out. Um, and then if you feel so good, once you have stuff planned out and it's like auto posting and you can focus on your business. Another strategy tip is just to batch and then schedule everything. We schedule stuff in the Metrical app. It's not perfect, but when we were scheduling stuff, it was like clockwork. It would post and it was just wonderful because I was like, oh, I didn't post anything today. And then it would post and I'm like, oh yeah, it did it. So try to be consistent when you're starting out um, and then try to add value for Social media is, is such a beast, but if you can add value to attract your ideal customer or add value that your ideal customer would be interested in, that's another way that we are trying to differentiate ourselves on social media. Not just, oh, here's something new to buy. Here's a coupon. It's um, like, for example, maybe your target market is like new moms and you pack your hospital bag or, um, Create content around what you sell that offers value besides just selling your stuff. So that's something we are definitely working on in our small business. So types of content again are product reviews, product photos, um, customer photos, behind the scenes. I also, just a side note, I try not to post too many behind the scenes because you will then skew your followers from people who want to buy your stuff to people who want to make stuff like your stuff to sell. Does that make sense? So I try not to post too many behind the scenes or if we do show us making a shirt, I don't show every bit of the process or um, I try to be a little secretive there, not to be mean, but you don't want to attract other business owners. You want to attract your target customer. So that's something to think about with some behind the scenes content. Okay, so we talked about strategy of what to post using an app like Metrical to help make your life a lot easier. We talked about action tips like starting out on one platform and then once you get the hang of that, once you have that content, then you can start scheduling it out and make it super easy. We talked about comparison and if something is bothering you or if you feel that anxiety or that joy go away, I want you to mute that person or limit your scroll time and try to be productive and create content with that time. Okay, so now I also want to say, do not put all your eggs in one basket. So the other day, um, I think it was like a week or two ago, Instagram and Facebook were down for a few hours. A few hours, probably like four hours. I don't know how long it was down. People were panicked. So if all of your revenue comes from people on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, I mean, TikTok right now, as you're listening, is in the government. The US government is potentially going to put a ban on TikTok. Um, if your whole business is on TikTok, I'm sh pretty sure you're having a little panic attack right now. So don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, social media is an awesome tool for brand awareness, for sales and marketing, but you need a whole toolbox. You don't just need a tool. Oh my goodness. 
another thing that kind of just got my mind blown is the average lifespan of a social media post, especially like Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok is so short, especially if it's a story. This kind of changed my mind because I had been previously posting a lot of stories and then we're like, no one sees those after 24 hours. So putting all that effort into something that goes away and no one can ever see again. Oh gosh. So I want you to be very strategic with your time, with your energy and diversify so that you're, if TikTok is banned, you're, you're going to be okay. If Instagram goes down for five hours, you're not going to miss a meal. So all that being said, I know it's a little dramatic, but social media is a tool, a great brand awareness, a great marketing, but also so is word of mouth. So is repeat customers. Those customers who are super satisfied and keep coming back. Etsy is a great tool in our toolbox. It has been so good for our business where we still get a majority of our orders. We get so many repeat customers because we offer great customer service. We offer follow through, we offer quick shipping. So we are trying to diversify ourselves that way as well. So we are not relying on a TikTok to get us orders and then them never come back again. We're hopefully trying to create lifelong customers that keep wanting to come back for our items. So that's something to think about. If you are so stressed about creating social media content, I want you to take a breath and just remember it's just a tool in your toolbox. There's other things, there's word of mouth, there's friends and families, there's local businesses, especially if you do embroidery, screen print, custom apparel, there's schools, other businesses need their logos on stuff. So I want you not just to pigeonhole yourself into, oh, you have to have a viral TikTok to have a business. No, you don't. I also don't want you to forget about these old school um, social medias that kind of got pushed to the wayside when TikTok came out and good old fashioned Pinterest. Oh my gosh, I love Pinterest and I love what it can do. It's just like YouTube. It's the slow and steady wins the race. You're not going to probably get viral, but it's going to keep snowballing and keep getting out there in front of your customers because a little thing called SEO. I still think YouTube and Pinterest are my favorites because you don't have to be active every day. And that's something I struggle with is being posting constantly. I could post a video from four years ago and it still gets views on YouTube. The same thing on Pinterest. Some pins that I posted like two years ago are still getting views and still getting clicks. So another strategy is don't forget about Pinterest. Okay, also here's a little bonus tip. So when you do post things on Pinterest, you can just share them from your Etsy shop or your website, but make sure you, there's a little toggle that says find other items. You do not want Pinterest suggesting other people's stuff under your stuff. It's like a little shopping bar, you've probably seen it. So turn that toggle off, you can make it in a setting where it does not recommend any other, um, on anything you post that it won't recommend other items. So turn that toggle off. I realized on our Pinterest for our business, I had that toggle on, I didn't know. I was like, oh, I lost so many sales probably because I had that on. So make sure you turn that toggle off where it recommends other items. Um, so we pin from our Etsy, we pin from our website. And here's another thing about a website. You could reserve the domain if you want. Um, we are just now getting into where we get random orders on our website. Most of our website orders are from people we know. Um, so that's always good. It saves some fees, but you don't need a website to start out. Don't let someone fool you into thinking you do. Um, if you're going to blog or if you're going to post content on there that can maybe help you get traffic, but there's one thing, you could have the most beautiful website, it could even have the best SEO, but if you have no one coming to your website, they're not gonna buy anything. So I want you to take maybe the pressure off of getting a website right away. Again, you can reserve the domain of what your business name is, but you can slow roll that one. Okay, another avenue that we are 
putting in our toolbox that we have not explored yet is email marketing. I know this is supposed to be about social media, but I also want to give you tools that aren't social media because social media can be so life sucking sometimes. I know I'm being dramatic, but it really can. So we are going to start hopefully sending some emails because I can't control what the algorithm shows, but I do have an email list. You don't own your Instagram, you don't own your Facebook, you don't own your TikTok, so if they get taken away, all your customers get taken away. So I would like for you to possibly think about capturing some emails and start contacting your customers that way. Um, we are definitely gonna put an emphasis on this in the coming year, um, but it's a slow roll, so it's in a, a long-term play, but especially if things get banned, um, if stuff goes down, you have a way to contact your customers. So we talked about the life expectancy of content on social media and um, how Pinterest and YouTube are more of a long game and they have a little more SEO and a little longer shelf life, especially if people are searching things. But also we talked about word of mouth. Oh my gosh, word of mouth has been so awesome for our business. Um, my husband is great in person and so whether it's neighbors, friends, local businesses, sports teams, groups, clubs, local events. If you're making custom apparel, people need custom apparel. So reach out to them, network. In conclusion, I want you to not get caught up in the rat race of social media and trying to run your business too. Again, social media is such an awesome tool that we can use for brand awareness and marketing and getting in front of our customers. We live in such a crazy time now where we can be in our homes and selling items to people all around the country, all across the world. Um, so I don't want to negate how great it is, but I also want you to not feel bogged down that you have to post multiple times a day, that you have to do crazy reels, that you have to be on the TikTok, as I call it, to have a successful business. So start somewhere start to try to be consistent schedule stuff out so if you don't have good pictures or videos start taking that content start getting that stuff built up on your phone i take all my content on my phone you don't have to have a fancy camera and then start scheduling some posts out start getting ahead it feels so good when you have a whole month scheduled out again it doesn't have to be every day Use Metricool if you want to post on multiple places and then schedule it out. Start slow and work your way up. I love this strategy because then it gets you back to running your business, creating your products, and back to what you love to do and why you started your business in the first place. So, whew, I'm out of breath. I know today I packed a lot in today's episode. Um, I hope this was super helpful, not only with strategies and tips, but just to give you reassurance that you're not alone if you feel overwhelmed by social media. I want you to take back control um, and use social media for good and for good in your business. And I think you'll see a lot more success and you'll feel so much better um, and have so much more joy. So I want you to implement these tips. I want you to let me know um, what was your favorite tip today? What's your favorite platform to post on? You can leave that in the comments below. Um, and please make sure you subscribe and if you haven't liked this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And thank you so much for being here. This was so fun to chat. I want you to comment. Let's get to know each other. And until next time, thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next week.